So lately I've been doing a couple podcasts and different things like that. And the last one I was on, I was asked a very interesting question. I think it was the Average the Savage podcast. And he asked me if I could be anybody for a day, who would I be? And I had to really think about this question, dog. I was like, man, who would I be? And the only person I could think of, like the only person that I really would want to be for a day is the ultimate version of myself at the end of my journey. Like if I play all my cards right, who should I be ultimately? If I really get the most out of my life, then maybe the next day, Martavis Bryant gets suspended indefinitely from the NFL. And I think, wow, Martavis didn't get the most out of his first career. He'll still have more opportunities, but he didn't get the most out of his first career. This Martavis story, I think is a good warning story. There's hella pitfalls and hella lessons in here that we can kind of look out for in our own lives that will keep us from, you know, reaching our ultimate potential. Regardless of your talent, you're not entitled to nothing. If you don't continuously work, somebody will take your spot. Learn to adapt. Just because something got you to this point don't mean it's gonna work forever. Appreciate your gifts. Once that gift has passed, find another one, bro. You got more than one, I promise. Cultivate that one. Appreciate that one. You feel me? If you saw my last video on Jake Locker, we talk about the fact that success means different things to different people, 100% facts and technically i could take a similar angle in this martavis bryant story but i'm not why simple unlike jake locker bj raji and a bunch of other people that i've covered martavis did not leave the league voluntarily there are no deals currently on the table for martavis because he was suspended indefinitely and i want to be clear that i'm not here to try to judge martavis i got hella f ups myself i'm just here today to go through the story and try to identify the pitfalls and the mistakes and the things that me and everybody watching this video could look to avoid if we want to avoid a situation like martavis currently finds himself in if you're brand new here i got a huge backlog of what happened to some of your favorite players and we constantly dropping new content on a weekly basis so if you enjoyed this video consider subscribing also don't forget to like and share the video as that helps the channel continue to grow without further ado this is what happened to martavis bryant cue the win Martavis Bryant was born in Calhoun Falls, South Carolina, only an hour drive away from where he'd eventually play college football. But his upbringing would make it seem like that university was thousands of miles away. Calhoun Falls was a small town. How small? Well, according to Martavis, there was one stoplight in the entire town. I come from a small place. We got like three stoplights, bruh. So this place was tiny. Unfortunately, and way too many of these stories started out this way, but Martavis didn't have his dad in his life. He was primarily raised by his mom and his grandma. Tavis took the sports early with his favorites being football and basketball. He dreamed of one day becoming a professional, but before he could do that, he wanted to play at his dream college, Clemson. When Martavis was only 10 years old, he realized this was a possibility. See, a Clemson coach actually came to one of his Pee Wee games, right? This dude was killing. Clemson coach comes to the Pee Wee championship game. And he didn't do nothing crazy like offer him a scholarship when he was 10, but he came to see him, told him keep working. And that was all Martavis needed to realize that he could really turn this football thing into a career. After his sophomore year of high school, Martavis got some tough news. Apparently, his entire high school was shutting down. Basically, here's what happened. The size of the town came into play heavily. First off, there was only 238 students from grades 7 to 12. Not a lot of kids. See, the student to teacher ratio should have been at least 16 to 1. But instead, because they had so few kids, it was more like 9 to 1. So the school had to meet the standard regulations or be shut down. And in 2009, it was shut down and kids from that school were sent to different replacement schools. Martavis was sent to T.L. Hannah High in Anderson, South Carolina. Fun fact, that's the same school Chadwick Bozeman went to. And also this guy who apparently played on Friends, but whatever. It's also the school where James Radio Kennedy got cool with the high school coach back in 1964. And that's the guy that the movie Radio is based on, the Cuba Gooden Jr. movie that dropped in 2003. So six years later, in 2010, here's Martavis Bryant, a junior at the very same high school. He had 44 catches for 776 yards and six touchdowns that year. He also returned kicks and had 13 kickoff returns 
for 348 yards and a TD. His senior season was even better. His receptions went up from 44 grabs to 70 grabs, and his touchdowns went up from 6 TDs to 11 TDs, while his yardage basically remained the same. He also ran track during his time at T.L. Hanna and finished second in the 100 meter at the regional championship with a time of 10.85. He was an Army All-American and ranked as the number 8 player in the state of South Carolina. Everything seemed to line up so perfectly. He doesn't have any crazy recruiting stories because he'd only ever truly considered one school, and that was Clemson. So his decision should have been easy. Unfortunately, it wasn't so simple. After high school, Martavis didn't qualify for college eligibility under the NCAA standards. This could have been due to simply poor grades or test scores, but it also likely has something to do with Martavis attending Calhoun Falls for those first couple years of high school. A school that had failed to meet so many regulations, I'm almost certain that set Martavis back a bit. And then on top of that, I'm not sure exactly how the transfer process works, but I know when you transfer credits from a college, half of the stuff doesn't transfer over, you gotta retake it. I imagine a situation similar to that. Fortunately, they had a contingency. Hargrave Military Academy, an all boys boarding school, which made Martavis his third school in four years, which had to suck. And this time, it was all dudes, which is pretty much just horrible. I'm sure Martavis had to struggle to adjust a bit off the field, but on it, dude couldn't be denied. Here he teamed up with the son of Super Bowl winning quarterback, Doug Williams, and Martavis was the top target for young Doug Williams Jr. Didn't take them long to get on track as Martavis had five catches for 174 yards in the very first game. With help from his new QB, Martavis went on to become the number three prep school player in the nation. Finally, he was ready to realize a childhood dream of playing at Clemson University. Yo, and I'm not joking when I say this was wide receiver you. They had DeAndre Hopkins, who's my favorite wide receiver in the league right now. They had Jaron Brown, who's still in the NFL till this day, tight end Dwayne Allen, whose brother I recently met, and Dwayne's still in the league till this day. Not to mention Adam Humphreys and Sharon Pete. I mean, that's already a great start. Then in 2011, two more future NFL wide receivers show up. Sammy Watkins and of course, Martavis himself. But that was a problem. This was the first time Martavis was not the best wide receiver on the field. Martavis had become accustomed to just being the most talented guy. And later in life, he'd admit that he never really worked hard at football. It was something that came naturally to him. And in his own words, he said he'd just show up and play. Well, at this point in his life, his circumstances had changed. Regardless of talent, he would no longer be the best overall receiver by just showing up. It was clear from day one that this was no longer enough. This was Martavis' first opportunity to adapt. Unfortunately, he didn't recognize this opportunity and he went the opposite way. He began to shut down mentally due to feeling intimidated by the immense talent at his position. I think his confidence definitely suffered and this happens to any of us when we're out of our element or if we're ill prepared for a situation and we know it. You know the saying, confidence comes from competence and competence is built through preparation, Martavis really had not done that. But did I mention this dude was hella talented? Regardless to the lack of preparation, during Martavis' first year at Clemson, he had nine catches for 209 yards and two touchdowns. That is not a horrible freshman season at a school that's stacked at your position. The issue is Sammy Watkins, also a true freshman, had 82 catches for 1,219 yards and 12 TDs. He was immediately the man. So we know it's possible. Although the wide receivers there seemed to share a brotherhood, Martavis was continuously outworked. And because he was continuously outworked, he was continuously overshadowed on the field. As a sophomore, he improved his numbers. 10 grabs for 305 yards and four TDs. Sammy missed a few games that year, but still had 47 more catches and over 400 more yards than Martavis did. Even still, Martavis made the most of his receptions. He actually led all Division I players in yards per catch, averaging 30 yards every single time he touched the ball. So if that's the case, why he didn't just get more touches? Well, he ran into a monster. And I don't mean Sammy. DeAndre Hopkins is and has been my favorite wide receiver for years. Even before Deshaun Watson, another favorite of mine, got to the Texas to play with him. Back in 2015, when he was on Hard Knocks, it became clear to me that this dude was different. 
His confidence and tenacity was unmatched, yet it didn't seem forced or like he was trying to play a character or play a role. He was just being himself. I've never been the type to choose my favorite players based off talent. It's usually more attitude, mindset, philosophy that makes me a fan. Now, according to Sammy Watkins, when Martavis walked into Clemson, the Clemson coaches wanted him to start. I mean, imagine, you play NCAA 14 before, you got a true freshman, 6'4", 95 speed, 79 overall, and the dude is a beast. And you really want to bench this 85 overall sophomore you got named DeAndre Hopkins. I mean, come on, dude's like an 87 speed. He's like 6'1", but damn it, every time I throw this man the ball, he makes a play. I cannot take him off the field. That's basically what happened. Here's a direct quote from Sammy Watkins. Martavis Bryant wasn't better than DeAndre, but they wanted him to be better. They wanted him to start over DeAndre. It's little stuff like that that we kind of recognize. So from that quote, we can see that there's a little bit of drama in the wide receiver room, which is always the case. But it kind of shows that it was more the fact that they just couldn't deny DeAndre Hopkins. Then you got Martavis not working as hard as he should. You got him getting into some things off the field as well. For instance, he was academically ineligible to play in the Chick-fil-A ball in 2012. You know, stuff like that did not help his case. And he had to know he was more naturally gifted than DeAndre. So clearly there's another variable here. But Martavius never adapted his work ethic. Here's a direct quote from Martavis himself after his second suspension in the NFL. Now we'll get there later, but I wanna, let's talk about this quote real quick. I used to just show up on Saturday and ball out. Show up on Sunday, ball. I never trained in the off season, maybe like once a month. My first year, I went to LA in the off season. I was good during that first week, but then there wasn't any more training. So I'm not making this up, bro. He had all the natural ability, but he never cultivated or added to his skill set. That's a recipe for disaster. When DeAndre Hopkins left for the NFL in 2013, Martavis was finally allowed to show what he can do, playing in a role the Clemson staff had always envisioned for him. He had the best year of his collegiate career by far, racking up 42 receptions for 828 yards and seven TDs, a year where he bested his first two season stats combined. After that, he decided it was time to move on to the NFL. Now, this is one of the rare cases where I think staying in school could have actually benefited him. Now, I know that sounds insane coming from me. If you watch these videos on a normal basis, I never go that route. My usual line is, yo, there's little to no upside of coming back for that senior year. But in this particular case, there is. This would have been the first time Martavis would have been the true number one receiver. And he was only projected as a second or third round pick. So he could have gotten that up. At the same time, I do not blame him. He was ready to go and get paid for his services. I cannot and will never knock a man for that. At the NFL Combine, Martavis ran a 4-4-2 and recorded a 39-inch vertical. Like I said a second ago, he was projected to go as early as the second round, but he ended up falling all the way down to the fourth, where he was selected by the Pittsburgh Steelers. Funny enough, Martavis found himself in a similar situation to college. He came in to be the number two guy opposite Antonio Brown. His first training camp with the Steelers was described as shaky, and it took him until week seven to even get on the field. But once he did, dude was a touchdown machine right out the gate, scoring six TDs in his first four games. Martavis played in 10 games as a rookie and finished with 26 grabs for 549 yards and eight TDs. Pretty damn good. But then during the following year, 2015, Martavis saw his first NFL suspension, violating the substance abuse policy, which would become a trend for him, unfortunately. This first violation saw him miss four games due to suspension, then two more because of injury. So once again, he only played 10 games. And this time, he had 50 grabs for 763 yards and seven TDs in the regular season. So looking at that, we can imagine that if he'd played the entire season, there's a really good chance that he would have had a Pro Bowl caliber year. And like we talked about from the beginning, the talent was always there for Martavis. He just could never quite put it together. Now, I also want to mention that he had a huge game in a divisional round in the playoffs that year. He had nine catches for 154 through the air, then rushed for another 40 yards on the ground round as well. Still, the Steelers lost that game. Now, I'm not sure if Martavis felt he didn't deserve to have this success. It's just weird because every time he has like the biggest piece of success, he always follows it with like the biggest L. 
after having that amazing playoff game instead of building off that and getting ready to come back and just eat the next year for a full season he violates the substance abuse policy again he then admitted that he hadn't taken his first suspension too seriously he came out here to houston to stay with john lucas for a month and then that was pretty much that but the second suspension was much more severe the league suspended martavis bryant for the entire 2016 year martavis had thought about appealing but he lost the first appeal on the first suspension so he just didn't bother this one at the very least caught his attention mainly because he saw a lot of his cohorts in johnny manziel josh gordon and Justin Blackman and how their careers were completely derailed. So now, finally, he was taking this very seriously. He took all the steps that you'd expect. He cut down his circle, moved from LA, got it to a point where he could control it. Because when you put yourself in a chaotic environment, you can't really control how that thing ebbs and flows. So now, he'd calmed his life back down. It's funny because Martavis's substance of choice used to do that for him. And when he had to actually quit smoking marijuana, he barely slept for like the first week. He had come to rely on the marijuana to relax him and allow him to fall asleep. It would be nice if the league would allow marijuana or at least CBD that's less than 0.3% THC. For what these guys do, I honestly disagree with the rule, but it is the rule. So when you sign up for it to work in this organization, you're aware of the rule. So you gotta follow the rule or you're gonna put yourself in a position to be punished, AKA suspended. That's just how it go. I think Martavis's issues would continue to repeat themselves because he never really wanted to get to whatever the root of his issues were. For instance, when he was asked why he smoked marijuana, he answered, because I can. Like that was the answer he gave. And a lot of people are like this, man, we don't wanna open up. But when you don't address your personal history, that shit is destined to repeat itself. When Martavis was asked if he would talk to the team about it when he got back, his answer, nope. What happened, happened. What's done is done. There's nothing for me to say. Just move on and show with my actions. They'll see on the field. I'm not gonna go back and say nothing. They're grown men. This is a common response from many men. I've said this BS line on many occasions, but if you really think about it and you really honest with yourself, it's just because you wasn't ready to face whatever the actual issue was. And ironically, most of the time when you use that grown man line, that's usually when you're being the absolute most immature. Now it was during this suspension that Martavis made the quote that I stated earlier. The one where he says he used to just show up on Saturday and ball, show up on Sunday and ball. He never trained in the off season, you know, etc. He was finally able to make that statement because he had put on 10 pounds of muscle during the first few months of his suspension. And he was finally actually beginning to put some work on his own toward his craft. But at this point, it may have been too little too late. When Martavis returned to the Steelers in 2017, he once again had a new teammate there to challenge for his spot. His name, Juju Smith-Schuster, a kid who once again did not have the physical advantages to someone like Martavius. He wasn't as tall, he wasn't as fast, but he was big, strong, quick, had great hands. He put in the work and maximized his strengths and brought up his weaknesses. On top of that, with his very unique personality, this dude became a star out of nowhere and outplayed Martavius in his very first year on top of coming without all the drama. Fans immediately took sides and a small feud between Juju and Martavius ignited. After Martavius got back from suspension and saw his role in the offense had diminished thanks to the rookie, he requested a trade. Fans then flocked to Martavius' Instagram to let him know that Juju was better anyway. Here's how Martavis responded. Now he was clearly dealing with some jealousy here and we all would in that situation. I'll give a damn what you say. It would hurt you in that situation whether self-inflicted or not. Even still, you can't allow yourself to be baited so easily. And that's what happened to Martavis. He basically said that Juju was nowhere near as good as him. And the way he responded to that was wrong. He basically threw his rookie teammate under the bus over something a fan said. The teammate didn't even say that. Juju handled it like a pro. He seemed to not take it personally or let it really affect him. He just kept balling. And eventually, Martavis cooled down. I mean, again, he was super frustrated in this situation, like anybody would be. So let's not just, yeah, you know, Martavis. And it seems like they worked it out behind the scenes because later that same year, when asked about Juju again, here's what Martavis had to say. Juju should be rookie of the year. I don't know if he's gonna be, 
but he had a great year, man. He's competing with the dude from New Orleans. He was talking about Alvin Kamara. And out of those two guys, they deserve it. And it was looking like it was kind of cleaning up and everything was going to work out. Even still, the 2017 season would mark Martavis's last year as a Pittsburgh Steeler. On April 26, 2018, he was traded to the Raiders during the NFL draft. So again, Martavis had been requesting a trade. It kind of seemed like he'd won here. He didn't go to a perfect situation. And who's to say if he really wanted to trade or was just a bit hurt? I actually think he was just a bit hurt. But once he got to Oakland, his old issues resurfaced once again after playing eight mediocre games as a raider 27 grabs 266 yards and no touchdowns martavis once again tested positive for substance abuse and as of a few days ago he suspended indefinitely from the nfl and his career may be over before martavis bryant got to college he was always the most talented guy in the room he believed that he was great and i think once he got to clemson that belief system was challenged and he never quite asserted himself after that point. He just kind of rolled over and accepted a lesser role. Same thing when he came to the NFL. Truth be told, had he actually done what he was supposed to those first couple of years, the Steelers probably never draft Juju in the first place. Martavis is still probably balling for the Steelers right now. But I still couldn't figure out if he was just self-sabotaging or if he felt like his talent entitled him to something. It's one of the two. I guess you can read into it whatever you want. I lean towards more of an entitlement, insecurity type of deal because once he said, yo, I'm not going to apologize or even have a conversation about me being suspended for an entire year. Maybe you don't stand up in front of the team, but I mean, it's got to be somebody, like at least the wide receiver room or the coach, somebody that, that you feel bad for kind of letting them down. I mean, that's just human nature, right? Like if I get sick right now and I can't upload for two weeks, even though I was sick and I, I couldn't physically make a video, I'm still gonna feel bad. And when I come back, I'm still gonna apologize. It's not, you know what I'm saying? It ain't that deep. I hate being negative in these videos. Like I said at the beginning, I'm not here to judge Martavis. All I'm saying is that he didn't get the most out of his career. And in this situation, that's honestly an understatement. Not only did he not get the most out of his career, he really didn't even scratch the surface of what his talent could provide. And that's honestly one of my biggest fears in life. And it should be one of yours too. We were all blessed with different gifts and the last thing you want is to meet the ultimate version of yourself and y'all have nothing in common. Keep that in mind throughout your journey and hopefully it can help us all to reach our full potential. Yeah, you'll never know. Go, I'ma go, I'ma go again